John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Some things that I, I was uh, looking at this passage of Scripture throughout the week. And some things, the Lord highlighted some things to me in this passage of Scripture. I, you know, we've, this is one of the passages of Scriptures that you can like read, and I've actually preached on it a couple times here, uh, different, different areas of it. Uh, but rereading it and going over it, and, and there's some things, I, there's something I've seen in it that I didn't, I don't know, I guess I just didn't quite see before. But the Lord highlighted something to me, and I, I just, I like it. So, so I thought I'd bring that, what I had studied, and, and present it to, to you this morning. So there in John chapter 4, Notice in verse 1, "...when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus Himself baptized not, but His disciples, He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, <clears throat> and He must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh He to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, uh, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water and Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, just want to thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. I pray, Lord, as we study this past scripture, Lord, as we look at it, Lord, I pray that you teach us this morning, Lord. I pray that you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I can't do anything without thee. I need your help. <clears throat> Lord, I pray that you take this message, Lord. And Lord, every person, Lord, that makes up this congregation, Lord, that you just take it and apply it, allow them to apply it to their lives. Lord, I pray that you just speak to their hearts. Lord, maybe there's something in here, Lord, that... Uh, Lord, that they can use, Lord, that they can take it, Lord, and uh, and Lord, that they can just use it for Your glory. And Lord, I pray that, that this morning, Lord, as we study this, as Lord, we fellowship together uh, this morning, Lord, and we, Lord, have the song service, Lord. It was just wonderful, Lord. And and Lord, we just want to thank You for all that You do, Lord. Thank You for keeping us safe during those storms, Lord. And I just pray that, Lord, You'd be with those, Lord, that lost their homes this past week, Lord. And and Lord, so much, uh, also some lost their groceries, Lord, their, the meat in their freezers, Lord, and, and things such as that, Lord. And I just pray that You'd be with them, Lord. Be with those that are on a prayer list, Lord, those that has been diagnosed with cancer this week, lost their loved ones this week. Lord, be with uh, those that are sick, Lord, that's not here this morning, Lord. And uh, I just pray that you just give them strength this very day. Lord, as we study this past Scripture together as a church family, Lord, I just pray that you give us understanding of Your Word. Thank You for all You do. And all you're going to do and all this we ask in Jesus' name and the church of God to say, Amen. <clears throat> so notice, uh, so chapter 4, you can kind of see some things going on there uh, that I like really well, but notice this, the first one there in verse 4, he, he must needs go through Samaria. So the Lord needed, He had a need. Uh, and he needed to go. Now he could have bypassed Samaria, but he chose to go to Samaria. He he chose actually he chose to go through Samaria. Why? Because there was a need there, and we know this need to be uh, this Samaritan woman, right? The woman that sat upon the well, or actually she didn't sit upon the well. He sat upon the well. But but notice so. So here's where Jesus places Himself there in verse 5. This city, uh, Sakar. Uh, notice there was uh, Jacob's well was there. Notice verse 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied with His journey. Notice what He does. He set thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. So, so literally, Jesus sat down on this well. And in verse 7, here comes 
the whole purpose of Jesus being there. The whole purpose of Jesus going to this to that place was so that he would come to this so this woman, when she came to draw water, she would come and she would see the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Now here's where here's this information that I want to bring out where I, where what the Lord gave me as I was studying this. Look at verse eight. Y'all see the parentheses there in verse eight? Y'all see that? While Jesus was here sitting on this well, waiting for this woman to to uh, to come his way. In the meantime, that's what the that's what that means. Parentheses means. Meanwhile, in the meantime, here's some added information to this story. His disciples were gone. They're gone away. They was not. So here's <laughs> so here's the story. So Jesus placed Himself at this well to speak to this woman without His disciples. He made sure, he made sure that this arranged meeting here with this woman and Him, disciples would be gone. And so as I was thinking about that and as I was looking over this stuff and I was thinking about that, you know, the Lord... He on purpose wanted to be just him and this this woman at this well, and so I got to thinking about this. Here's the here's the here's the idea behind this message. Here's the here's the like the I guess you could call this the title, wherever you want to call it, but one on one, a long time, one on one encounter with Christ. Amen. A one on one with Christ. Now every single person in this building this morning. We'll have to have that. We'll have to come to a point to where it's just us and the Lord. It's not mom and daddy. It's not grandma and grandpa. It's not my my child. What's that song? It's, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Right? This is exactly what's taking place right here. It's the disciples are gone. Everybody's gone. There's there's nobody there. There is not a person in sight. There's no soul in sight. It's just it's just the Lord. It's just the woman. And there's this conversation that that begins to take place between Jesus and this woman. He says this in verse seven: "Give me to drink." Notice that. So give me to drink. And so now you can see, you can skip verse 8 because he asked this question to the woman. That's the meanwhile the disciples were gone. Verse 9, Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now I want to take that right there and I want to... I want to <clears throat> I want to show you why I feel like this is a one-on-one encounter with this woman, why Jesus made it this way, why He why He chose it to be this. And by the way, He did choose it to be this way. This is no accident that they was this was this was y'all, this was not an accident that this woman was coming to this well and Jesus was there. That didn't happen by accident. The same as this this morning, you didn't come here by accident. Amen. You can say, well, mama brought me, daddy brought me, whatever the case may be, grandma brought me, uh, or I came with somebody else. No, it was no accident that we're here this morning. I believe the Lord brought us. Amen. He arranged this meeting. So there was no accident here. He, he arranged this meeting. He set it up. He had it done. And so this woman, he says, how is it that you being a Jew, and Jews normally don't have any dealings with the Samaritans. And so this brings me to point number one in this message here. One, the point number one is there was no distractions. I want to show you all this. Look over in John chapter 9. Hold your spot right there because we'll come back. <clears throat> Notice this. There's no distraction. I'll show you what the disciples were famous about doing. In John chapter 9, this is, this is we can show you. I'm going to show you a few places and then we'll go back over there. Hold your spot in John chapter 4 because I want to show you what the disciples were famous about doing. And they wasn't there to do this. Y'all there? We're going to turn to four different places, and I want to show y'all four different times where the disciples interfered with with the Lord in, in sense. Verse one, chapter nine. 
And as Jesus passed by, He saw a man which was blind from his birth. Now notice this, verse 2. And His disciples asked Him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So you see the disciples, they kind of, when they seen this man blind, they, they presented a question, right? They kind of, in a sense, I'm not going to say they're interfered, but they're just curious. They just wanted to know what the situation was. They was wanting to know, now how come this man was blind? I kind of think this, I, I, I kind of picture this with the disciples as they asked Jesus, how come he was, was he born in sin? What was the case? I kind of feel like maybe they were talking out loud to where the blind man could hear this. Right? Could you picture that? You know, you ever, you know, some people talk too loud and, and over, and some people overhear them. So here's, but here's the disciples, man. They, they're just curious. They just want to know. And, they, and so, so there's that issue. Look at chapter 11, John chapter 11. Watch this. Here's the disciples again. This was when Lazarus was sick. They didn't go. Jesus wouldn't go. He was four days. Uh, he was four days dead. But before Jesus went, went there. Notice in verse five. So John chapter eleven verse five. <clears throat> now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Now watch this verse seven. Then after that saith he to his disciples. Now watch how they, this is what He says, and watch how they respond. Let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto Him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? So they question, right? Why do we want to go there? And you don't remember what the Jews wanted to do? Watch this, verse 9. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. These, say, these things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may wake him out of sleep. Now watch the disciples, watch what they say, their answer. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Right? So they're still trying to talk the Lord out of going back, back there to wake uh, Lazarus. He's fine. We don't have to go back. Then, notice this. Let's continue to read. Verse 13. Howbeit Jesus spake of His death, but they thought that He had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. <laughs> and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent uh, ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto Him. And then watch this in verse 16. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Man, talk about some negativity, right? Well, they ain't negative at all. Disciples ain't, they ain't, they ain't throwing water on, on fire whatsoever, right? But watch this. Let's go over here to Matthew chapter, uh, chapter 11, or 15, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 15. <clears throat> A couple more places I'll show you where the disciples interfered. In Matthew chapter 15. Everybody there? Look at verse 21. I know I'm going quickly. I just want to get to this point and show you in just real quick like, but in verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and, and noticed and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and noticed his disciples. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. So there's the so the disciples over and over again. You see the story. You see kind of how. I mean, hey y'all. I believe the disciples meant well. I really honestly do. I believe they was well meaning in what they were doing. Their questions. Their their statements. Their maybe perhaps you can see it as negativity. You know, hey, we we can't help this woman. Why you send her away? Get her away from us. And so. It was, it was just 
Comment after comment. Look at chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Let's look there. Disciples again. Matthew chapter 19, verse 13. Y'all there? Then were they brought, there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And notice this. And the disciples rebuked him, or rebuked them. The disciples rebuked the children, right? So it was. <laughs> Over and over and over again, it was almost as if the disciples were interfering with the Lord's work. They were kind of getting in the way. Do y'all see that? Like over and over and over again? So all through, that's, that's four different places that we've seen where the disciples, where Jesus was, was, where somebody came to Him, someone came to Him, or He went to somebody, and the disciples had something negative to say or some something they didn't like about the situation over and over and over again now i believe this i believe with all my heart that the disciples they meant well i believe that these disciples loved the lord they were followers of the lord they was looking to the lord's best interest perhaps but these some of these were situations where it was kind of a foot in mouth situation right and although we know that they didn't totally hinder the Lord's work, I mean they didn't because the Lord, every situation the Lord, He continued on with His work. But you know, you think about it though in a sense that the Lord always had to give them an answer. He always had to pause what He was doing to get back to what the disciples, to answer the disciples, to give them an answer or to rebuke them or show them what He's trying to do and then to, before He can get back to His work. So, so nonetheless... <laughs> It was no doubt the disciples were were a distraction, and I'm telling y'all in in John chapter four, here's a situation, here's a story where Jesus comes to this woman at the well. He 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 gets there, and guess what? It's just him and her. It's not the disciples to ask questions. It's not the disciples to say, why are you talking to this woman? Why is she here? Why are we here? It's not the negativity being poured into it. It's not cold water being put on the fire. I'm telling you, it was just, so here's the, it was, it was, it was straightforward. It was the Lord Jesus and it was a Samaritan woman and there was absolutely no distractions that could cause a hindrance from him doing what he needed to do for this Samaritan woman. None whatsoever. And you know, I was thinking as I was studying this and writing this, oh, how the devil likes to throw some distractions in the middle of the, the, the conversation that you're having with the Lord. Amen? When the Lord's trying to get your attention, he's trying to, He is trying to speak to your heart. He's trying to get your attention and He's trying to tell you some things that you need to be doing some, and how to get your walk closer to Him. And all of a sudden, the devil will throw some distraction right there. He'll throw a question upon that. He likes to get in the way. The flesh likes to get in the way. People like to get in the way. And unknowingly, sometimes it's not... It's, hey, I'm not saying the disciples were wrong every single time, but man, did they cause some distractions a lot of times. You know that happens in a church service a lot of times. You get to play it on your phone beside somebody in the pew with you and all of a sudden you cause a distraction from them paying attention to the Word of God being preached. Amen? Sometimes, you know, and I ain't saying nobody here, I ain't, I ain't pinpointing anybody at all, but, you know, it's not the time to balance a checkbook. It's not time to check Facebook. It's not time to check Twitter. It's time to pay attention to the preaching of the Word of God. Amen? Because you, not only, sometimes, not only is it a distraction to you, but it's a distraction to a person beside us. Right, amen. That's why, as the baby was crying a while ago, that the, you have the mothers and the grandma that quickly try to get it, get the baby to where he's not a distraction. Right? Because even a little baby can, can not, baby don't, he don't know anything. He don't know he's causing distraction. He has no idea. He's doing what babies do. Cry. 
Want a bottle. But oh, how that can cause a distraction this morning. And so Jesus, I, I'm, this is, I'm telling you, the Lord, He planned this on purpose right here. He says, I need to be there in Samaria and it needs to be just me and this woman at this well. I need no distraction. And it just so happens that the disciples, they needed meat and they were sent away. And now it's just you and it's the Lord. And then this conversation breaks forth. Give me to drink. And then, you know, as our answer comes and, and Jesus begins to expound to her the, the living water that He has to give. It's the gift of God. Uh, and in verse 13, He says, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Amen. Just telling her about this living water. He's telling her about Himself. He's telling her about the Holy Spirit. That's what He's telling her about. But you know, not only that, but notice this. I, I think this too. Here's a, As we get on what He's fixing to say to her right here in verses uh, 17, or verse 16 on down to verse 19. Here's another thing that I think about. As I was, as I was looking over this and reading it and praying about it and... So he mentions, you can see what he mentions there, verse 16 through 18. Let's just go ahead and read it, and I'll tell you what I, my thought is on this. Verse 16. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that sayest thou truly. Here's my second thought with this. Here's my second thought with this. Not only did he, he didn't want any distractions, but you know what else? He didn't want to embarrass this woman. Now think about that. <laughs> Seriously. It was just him, her. He knew her sins. He knew what she was participating in. And he didn't sit there and bash her and call her out in the front of everybody. Like what happens a lot of times in a lot of places is let's blast somebody's sins. Let's, let's make them stand up. Let's, you got to tell the whole congregation what you're doing, what you're involved in, and why. And all, no, it, was not, it was none of that. It was simply Jesus and her alone. Jesus calls her sin out. He calls what she's doing. And guilty. She knew it. Amen. It makes me think of this. Here's what it makes me think of this morning. That our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, He takes our sin, He covers it with the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross at Calvary to not be remembered ever again. You got some secrets in here? You got some deep, dark secrets? You see, this wasn't no secret to the Lord. He knew what she was doing. He knew her ever thought, her ever deed. Right? So you got some secrets, you got some sins that you don't want nobody to know about. You know what, this morning? Here's what the Bible tells us. Here's an altar here this morning that you could cry out to. Cry out on to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what the Bible says. Confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Look, I'm not going right here. There's a man in this closet and I'm going to tell him all my biggest, deepest, darkest secrets and say, will you pray for me and get me into heaven? Absolutely not. I'm not going to ask anybody this morning to come to me and tell me your biggest, deepest, darkest secret. The only way you're going to get into heaven if you proclaim that thing right now, then you'll go to... No, absolutely not. My friend, you come here this morning, if you're lost and you're undone, and sin that's over your head, sin that has destroyed you, sin, it may be known by the public, it may not be known, but you take that sin, you come forward, and you say, Jesus, I give that to you. I confess my sin to you. <laughs> Please, will you forgive me? Will you save me? 
Man, I've heard that. You know what? I heard so when I was in the there was the jailhouse ministry that I was in. I preached at the jail for about four years. There in Gritter. Preached there. And there were several guys says, but you don't know what I've done. There's no way that God will forgive me. You don't know what I've done, preacher. You, you just have no idea what I've done. I say this morning, congregation this morning, lost man this morning, lost boy, girl, I, I don't care what you've done. It's none of my business what you've done. It's not. It was none of my business what those folks, I didn't care, I could care less what they were in jail for. That's not why I was there. To find out the gossip or the scoop or to find out why they was in behind bars. I could care less about that. I was there that night, those Thursday nights, I was there to proclaim the Gospel to lift Jesus up and let Him deal with them and let them come to Him. And they wasn't coming to me. They were going to Him. And guess what? And, and, and Jordan, some of them, some of them did. Some of them, man, they, they gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and I didn't ask them after that. Okay, what did you? It was it's still that was a conversation between them and the Lord. That was God's business. That was God's dealing. Do I believe God saved them? Absolutely. If they were sincere with it, if they sincerely gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, if they sincerely confessed Him as their Savior, yes, they got saved right there in the jail cell. Did I know what they've done? No, I didn't. There were some, I'm telling y'all, some with some horrible stories. It's not my purpose to know what they've done. This woman, this was a conversation between her and the Savior. I know that you're living with a man. That's what he said. I know that you've had five husbands. That's what he said. He got it right. But it was a conversation between him and her. You know what? I, yes, it got recorded in the Bible. But you know why it got recorded in the Bible? For an example so that you and I can read it. So we can know that, hey, if I've been married five times, Jesus still forgives me. I have not. But if Jesus, if I have been, Jesus still forgives me. Right? Amen? If I was putting uh, drugs in my arm, God forgives me. I mean, Right? Absolutely. However, now I will say this. I will say this this morning. This is what I'll say. Here's the problem with sin in the lives of people. They allow that sin, like the prisoners, some of those prisoners did, to be bigger than the Lord. That's what they did. That's what they're doing when they say, you don't know what I've done, preacher. There's no way the Lord can save me. They're saying that the Lord is, is not big enough to save them. That's what they're saying. But I'll say this to, to you, my friend, this morning. The God that I serve, the God of this book, the God of this Bible, the Lord Jesus Christ, He's bigger than any sin that you have ever committed. <laughs> Amen. He's bigger than anything that holds you back from coming to Him. You know the problem? We make it bigger than what it ought to be. That's the problem. We make it too big for God. But again, it was just her and Jesus, a conversation between her and Christ, her and the Lord. And watch this. Look at verse 27 of chapter 4, John chapter 4. And upon this time, or this, came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? You you know you want to know something. Now the story did eventually get rehearsed because it's recorded in in the book of John chapter four, but again, that's for our learning. 
for our admonition. But you know what? When he, when she, when 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 the disciples came back and reunited with the Lord, Jesus didn't sit there and air her business out to his disciples. He didn't. He didn't think about this. He didn't belittle her. He didn't sit there and say, oh, "You know what this woman's done? Let me tell y'all something." Right. So we'll get on social media today. We'll get on Facebook today. We'll get on Twitter today, Snapchat, whatever it is. And I mean, we'll say, guess what so-and-so. I mean, we'll just put all the business out there. Right? Praise God we say we, we serve a, a Savior. We've got a, a, a high priest sitting on the right hand of the Father interceding for our sins. And when we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's not gossiping. He's not sending the information down to the, to the, to the next church down the road or to this one or that one and saying, look, you, you know what so-and-so's done? <laughs> Amen. We've got, hey, think about that. You come to the, th- the throne room of heaven. Amen. That's what you do when you, when you go to your prayer closet. You're going to the throne room of heaven. Bible says, "Come boldly to the throne room of grace, and you put your and you tell the Father, you tell Jesus your 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 thoughts, your problems, your situations. You confess to Him. They're forgiven. They're covered. He's not airing them. He's not telling them. So I I, I believe this with all my heart. Jesus." That he knew that number one, there would be no distractions. Number two, he knew that we can get the business here. We can talk about, we can get one on one. I'm going to tell you what your faults are. One on one, just me and you is what Jesus, that's, that's the situation there. And I, he did, man. He didn't, he didn't cut. Look, that's what the Holy Ghost does this morning. Here's another thought with that. Y'all, he puts a finger right on your issue. The Holy Ghost does. When the Lord deals with you, you know what your issue is. That's what he did. He was it was it was the Lord putting his finger right on her issue. She couldn't deny it. Then third thing. Here's the third thing about this. Not only was there no distraction, number one, there was no embarrassment, number two, but there was no hesitation. Number three, no hesitation. None whatsoever. Y'all think of it. No hesitation. In other words, when Jesus presented her a statement, she asked a question. It was a smooth conversation. Right? Straight to the point. Right what she needed to hear. Right what He needed. No hesitation whatsoever on both parties. Matter of fact, if you continue to read this thing, you can see some things. Notice this. I'm going to skip a few, but uh, when Jesus, notice in verse 21 through 26, you know, Jesus telling where to worship Him, where to worship the Father at, and how to worship that He's to worship in spirit and truth. Uh, in verse 24, God is a spirit. And then in verse 26, Jesus reveals Himself to her. I that speak unto thee am He. But notice this. Notice this. Just, there's no hesitation about this. Verse 27. And upon this came His disciples and marveled. Well, we read that. Verse 28 now. Notice this. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. It is not this the Christ. No hesitation. That was, you know, that was actually the Lord accomplished what He went to do. His need was to go to this well to meet this Samaritan woman. So the Samaritan woman would run to the city, tell the men of the city, so the men of the city would come back to Him. And not only did they come back to Him, but He's teaching His disciples as the men of the city are coming to Jesus. He's telling His disciples the harvest truly is plenteous. Look on the harvest. And as they begin to look, there come the people of Samaria to Him. 
ready to receive. No hesitation. It's pretty good, right? So, I'm telling y'all, this morning, one-on-one with Christ, get to do some things for you. One-on-one with Christ, just you and Him. Remove all distraction. Don't, I'm telling you, one-on-one with Christ. He's, you know, Jesus is a perfect gentleman. He'll not embarrass you. He wants to help you. He wants to help you. That's what Jesus wants to do this morning. He doesn't want to try to blast your name all through the social media or in the public. Or He wants to help you. Matter of fact, what is the Bible? Is it John chapter 8 where it talks about if the Son make you free, ye shall be free indeed. That's what Jesus wants to do this morning. He wants to make you free. But I'm telling you, you have to come to a point where you say, it's just me and Christ. And here's, here's my fault. Here's my problem. Here's my situation. Not to the preacher, not to the people, but to Jesus Christ one-on-one. And then finally, when, he, when the Lord does a work on you, when the Lord does a work, when Jesus gets your attention, my friend, there's no hesitation. You'll get that thing right. There's no hesitation. When Jesus does the work, it's right. It's good. Amen. So this morning is... (laughs) Are you at the well? I ain't talking about a physical well. I'm talking about a spiritual well. Are you there this morning? And maybe, hey, maybe it's this. Say, Brother Aaron, I, I'm not lost, but I'm saved. But I have allowed some sin to get in the way of me doing the work for the Lord. Come get that thing right. Give it to Him. Let Him forgive you. You know, I believe, I also believe this. 1 John 1 9 is written to the brethren. It is. Confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Look, just because you are born again, just because a person gets saved doesn't mean that they'll never sin. They'll never mess up. They'll never make mistakes. Oh, we're living in this flesh. Yes, you will. But there's good news this morning. You can get that thing right. You know what we do? It's like this. Let me. I'm, I'm almost done. I'm going to explain it like this. It's like Chase and 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 and, and uh, Grayson right there. Grayson goes and rebels against Chase. I'm talking about the child of God. I'm talking about the born again believer now. Grayson goes and, and, and rebels against Chase. He said, don't ride the dirt bike right now. Grayson goes out there and gets on that dirt bike because he's a little boy. He loves dirt bikes. And maybe perhaps he wouldn't pay attention. Maybe he wouldn't. He just thought, well, maybe, maybe daddy just, there's something else. But whatever the case may be. Grayson goes out there, gets on a dirt bike. He rides a dirt bike. Chase... Hollers, get off that dirt bike. Fellowship is wrecked right there for a second. I'm mad at you. There's no fellowship. I cannot fellowship with you. I'm, I'm angry with you right now. There's got to be some discipline. But then there's discipline, then there's hugging, there's fellowship restored. Grayson never ceased to be his son. He's still his son. He messed up. He got on the dirt bike when he wasn't supposed to. So therefore, the fellowship wreck, not the sonship. That's the born again believer this morning. Look, we've all been there. If you're saved this morning, you've been there. You have. There's been a point in your life where you've maybe daily, every day, we we sin daily to where we have lost fellowship with the Lord. Maybe we told a white lie or something. Maybe we didn't do something that we're supposed to do. Right. 
And so there's a fellowship. You're out of fellowship. The Lord chastens you. He gets you right. You repent. And then the fellowship restores. You never lost your sonship. <laughs> it's good to be in the family of God. It's good to know that our sins have been forgiven. It's good to know that the blood it has covered our sins. It's good to know that we're, we are the child of God by birth. We've been born into the family of God. And my friend, you are sealed until the day of redemption. You can't lose that thing. However, you do make mistakes. You do sin. You do mess up. And then there's fellowship that, that is, is, as a result of that, you lose fellowship. But this morning, I'm telling you, if your fellowship is wrecked this morning, you say, Brother Aaron, I've been doing some things as a Christian I know better than doing. I've been do, participating in things I know better to participate in. If that's you this morning, I'm telling you, you can restore that fellowship. But I tell you, but I warn you, don't continue in it. Because the chastening only the, the chastening only gets worse. <laughs> so, two people in this room: the lost and the saved. The lost needs to get born again, become a son of God, and the saved. If you're saved this morning, so, and you need to restore fellowship, that's you this morning. Let's make this right. Amen. Jesus is visiting. He visited the woman at the well. He visits us this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank You for the message. I pray that You use it for Your glory. And Lord, I just pray that You just allow us, Lord, let us not, uh, Lord, let anything hinder us from come to you, coming to You, Lord. And Lord, if, if anybody, Lord, in here is lost and don't know You as their Lord and Savior, I pray that this morning they make that right. Maybe there's somebody in here this morning, Lord, they saved, Lord, but they're just, they know what they've been doing, Lord, is wrong. Lord, they know they're out of fellowship with you, Lord. You've convicted them, Lord. You're convicting them right now, Lord. I just pray that they'd not leave this building until they get this thing right, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for this service. We thank you for all that you.